for the, the better part of the, the 2010s, right, the last decade, there was uh, quite a bit of belief that we'd have a robot apocalypse, uh, lots and lots of jobs will go away. I don't think that anybody envisioned uh, the new normal of 2020. You know, 2020s have arrived and bang, we have COVID-19. And so, yeah, there is, the jobs of the now are being shredded before our very eyes, but it didn't quite come in the form factor that perhaps um, a lot of the, the cognoscenti out there uh, believe. Robert, you are with the Cognizant Center for Future of Work. Can you give the audience a little two-minute overview of the, of the Center for the Future of Work and a little bit about your role? Yeah, sure. Thanks so much, Jesse. Um, yeah, so I'm Robert Brown with the Cognizant Center for the Future of Work. Um, many people uh, know Cognizant as being a very large global technology services company. Uh, we're an American company uh, headquartered in New Jersey. The Center for the Future of Work is is, is very small. Um, uh, we are a small think tank within Cognizant, and our job is to think about, uh, write about, talk about, present about, uh, break bread with lots of different constituents about how people will work in a future that is increasingly suffused with algorithms, automation, and AI. So in, in that space, you're working on a new report called After the Virus, Looking Back on the Next Five Years. Um, can you tell us kind of what the current assumptions are in the report? Yeah, you, you bet. In fact, the report is already available. And so I want to make sure that, uh, you know, for any of the folks watching, we can get um, them copies of, of it. Uh, uh, and, and so the, the, the main setup really is we're, we're imagining that we're in the year 2025. And we're looking back uh, at sort of the, you know, maybe the three year period between now and 2023. What happened? What happened when we sort of got on the backside after the virus? And there's several big um uh, assumptions that we that we wrote about that, and I think you know again, sort of cognizance of technology company, and so maybe starting from that that lens, the first thing we talked about is is this is this is online's big bang moment. Uh, the you know notions of of uh, working from home, uh, telework. I think when I started working 25 years ago, you know people talk, called it teleshirking. Well, all of those old notions about uh, working from home is is not you know fit for purpose for some companies. I think have gone out the window. So everything that can move online will move online. And, and one of the things that we've also written about a bit about that's um, related to that is that now everyone's home is sort of their castle, right? So people may be thrust into this working uh, remotely mode and never going back. But today, as we sit here in you know May of 2020, maybe they're fighting with their spouse over the kitchen table space because they don't have a dedicated home office. And so uh, we, we've used this term remotopia to describe where we may be going in the next three to five years where, you know, sort of the, the, the quintessential uh, digital uh, nomad, uh, you know, globetrotter who's maybe working from the beaches of Bali or Phuket, you know, that does seem sort of like a utopic existence. Obviously, right now with COVID-19, that's not happening. But I think on the long game, if today is long on the remote, but short on the utopia of maybe not having a dedicated home office space, people are going to be rethinking that notion of, you know, their home is their castle. How do we start to employ uh, smart technologies in our own personal spaces? And uh, maybe the notion of the traffic jam uh, commuting into San Francisco or over Altamont Pass here in California, you know, it becomes a, a thing of the past. Um, and I think part and parcel of that, too, you know, another big thing that we talked about is, you know, you and I are kind of we're, we're, we're forged in this this mold a, a bit. You know, we're always on the big metal tube that flies uh, business travel everywhere and anywhere. And so do we maybe go into a mode where business travel as we knew it loses its cool? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe, you know, 10 years ago, sort of like, hey, you know, I had to go to, to Sydney for a three day conference and people would say, wow, you know, that that's that's super cool. You went to Sydney for a three day conference. And now do we move into a mode where it's like, well, you know, you went to a Sydney for a three day conference. You know, how could you possibly do that? So so the, then the imperative of climate change. Um, that, you know, the things that Greta Thunberg and others have been talking about for a long time, maybe move from the fringe to the mainstream. Um, and then I think the, lot, the last couple of things I would focus on is, you know, just, just health in general. You know, we have spent the last 20 years, all of us in America, you know, we've been dealing with the TSA when we go to the airport. Well, now is it time to welcome in the, the HSA, the health 
Security Administration. Um, and so every you know building in San Francisco, LA, New York that you go into, are you confronted with uh, you know a panoply of technologies and screenings that allow you to get in the building? Um, Mark Benioff was talking about the Salesforce Tower just the other day uh, and saying you know a choke point. I found this rather astonishing. You know I hadn't really thought about it. A choke point in that building is the elevators, and so. Again, kind of going back to the commuting metaphor, you know, you commute all your all the way into San, downtown San Francisco, and then you got to prepare yourself for the commute <laughs> up the elevator. You have to wait in line for the for the HSA. Um, and we're already seeing this is something we talked about in after the virus, what we call the birth of the clean regime. Uh, United Airlines CEO uh, just yesterday announced a, an initiative that they have uh, co-branded in partnership with none other than Clorox. Uh, to talk about the clean regime that they're adopting in their airplanes. So I think that rethinking of everything from public space to transportation to our workspaces, all of that rethinking of you know hotels, the list is endless, uh, how we rethink that.